Today we're going to talk about what to do with our, our drawing next. Now, since I saw you last, at the end of our last demonstration, I worked on my drawing for about another 30 to 45 minutes. So you might notice that my drawing is different than what ended up in the video. There's a lot more shadow. So today I'm not going to finish in this video the whole rest of the drawing. I'm going to do some of the slice and some of the leaves so that you see what to do next. Before we start with our drawing and the next step of adding color to those two areas, we need to revi revisit our colors. We had one group of colors, which was our neutral colors, black, brown, and white. Today, we will use the white and the brown, but just like last time, we are not using black. So let's put that away. Then we had our warm colors that we used for the basic part of the whole peach, the yellows, oranges, and reds. I'm going to use those today. So I will leave those out. And since we're not using black, we need to think a little bit more about our color wheel and how to create shadows. Shadows are basically uh, made up of cool colors most often, and we can use complementary colors. Complementary colors are opposite. So if I look at red and I go straight across the color wheel, that is the complement. If I take blue, my next primary color, goes straight across, my complement is orange. And if I have yellow, my other primary color, and go straight across, my complement is violet. Okay. So if we keep in mind that using our complementary colors will really help us with our shadows, it will make our drawing more interesting. If I look at my drawing, and if you look at my drawing, you will notice that there, is, there are many layers of colors. So today when we're adding color, I cannot stress enough that we are starting with a base color and we are using light pressure. Light pressure and light value is we're going to be using about 50%. So, or 30% in that range. So this, if I'm pressing hard and it's dark, is 100%. We are not using that. 50% to 30% is going to be about like this. Okay, so if I press harder and I make it 100%, it's too dark and I cannot blend colors. I cannot get the layers. Now let's try the same thing with a warm color. This is 100%. The pencil is shiny. It will not blend. This is 50 to 30% range. How do I get more colors? By using another color and I can go the same direction when I layer my colors. My second layer would also be about 30 to 50 percent. If I need a more yellow, then my yellow will blend if it's more of a yellow orange. If I get too much orange or too much yellow, I can come back with my base color and add another layer of red to blend the colors. So I'm building up my drawing, building up my drawing, building up my drawing. One of the hardest things about adding color is to remember the importance of saving highlights. Highlights are the lightest areas in the drawing. So here I have really strong highlights on the peach slice. So I have light value on the side, but the highlights are even lighter than the whole slice. And it doesn't really matter whether I'm talking about the slice, the whole peach, or the leaves. Each of those areas does have highlights, so I need to look for those. Um, let's see. And we want to save those with our base color layer because even if we go back with an eraser, we can't get them back. So the best thing is to leave them there at the beginning. 
All right, I think those are the main things that I wanted to share with you. It will be handy and helpful if you have your color wheel uh, once you start drawing so you can refer to that. I'm going to start with the peach slice today and the base color is yellow and it's a very light yellow so I'm using light pressure of that 30 to 50 percent and if the peach slice curves sort of like a half circle then I want to curve my pencil strokes if I just go horizontally or vertically it's hard to get um, the curve of the form Remember the form we've been talking about for a while? The form is what makes something seem three-dimensional. So a circle to feel like a ball or a sphere, that is form. Okay, here we go. All right, now my highlights are up here. So I'm not... I, I noticed when I looked at your drawing, some of you were drawing a big, hard pencil line around that. I don't want you to do that. I'm not going to do that either. I'm coming with my next value, and I'm going to kind of shade around where those highlights are. So rather than drawing a line, I'm going to shade around them to create that darker space. And I'm looking at, again, I'm going with the shape, the form, the surface direction of the peach skin here. And if I look at the edge, I can see there's some reflected light along this edge. It's lighter there. So as I'm adding color, I'm going to leave some of that edge that lighter value. Okay. Now, in this part of the peach, we have a lot of red, but underneath the red there is orange. So I'm going to, again, follow the curve of the center of the peach there. I'm not trying to cover up the yellow. And when I look at the side of the slice of the peach, I see some uh, texture marks or color marks going coming out into the peach. So when I'm looking at that, it's easy to get distracted and to push hard. I'm still maintaining my light pressure. So I want to see where else there is that orange value. If I look out here towards the edge, there's like a little flag, so this is going to continue up and come on out. Sometimes it helps to kind of think about squinting your eyes. So what does squinting my eyes mean? It means if I was out on the beach on a sunny day and I did not have sunglasses, what would I do with my eyes? I would kind of scrunch them together to block out some of the sun. And um, see a little color and value variation here. Again, my pressure is very light along the edge. It's a little bit of a cool shadow there, but we'll be making it cool in a little bit. Okay, time for another value. Let's come in with the orange, the red now. This spot is pretty red here, but even within that, it is not all the same. Light pressure. Coming back to another part of the peach. What is that texture like? What is the surface? Is it rough? Is it smooth? in this textured area where the seed is or was. 
I want to maintain some of those light areas and up here on the end of the peach a little bit more reddish tone comes through. I'll come back and work on that a little bit more later. Now I'm going to look down here on the bottom of the peach skin. There's a little bit more red right here at the edge. I want to be careful that I'm not outlining. And it's sometimes a good idea to hold our drawing out at a little distance. If we're working at it too closely, it's easy to get a little bit lost. And I can see, okay, let's bring in a little shadow. And I talked about complementary colors. I'm going to start with green. Green and red are opposites. And right here at the edge of the skin, I'm not making the skin green. I'm just changing the red a little bit. Make it a little more interesting adding a little more depth, a little more layering. And where I want that to be stronger, in fact, I want it to be stronger here, I'm going to come back and use some blue. I'm not, I'm not making it blue. And then I talked about how there's a little shadow here at the edge. Okay, so Maybe not enough, but it's getting there in the right direction. And then let's go up here to the top where the pit or the seed was. My marks, as much as possible, I want to reflect the texture of the surface with my marks. So if the surface is rough, I'm not going to use a very smooth line. I'm going to make it kind of jagged. Sort of like when we did the banana peel. Um, that tried to capture the texture of the banana. Okay, I don't want that to get too blue. I'll have to come back and add a little bit more of my base color. Again, I'm not pressing hard. Okay, and so as I build the leaves, then that will tell me how much more I need to do here. All right, for our leaves, we're going to use our green, our dark green, as our base color. And we're going to start um, with the foremost leaf. And I'm doing one leaf at a time because the um, surface is going to determine the light and the shadow. And so it will be, it's a lot easier to make it a, more natural if. I do one leaf at a time. And again, I'm paying attention to the surface of the leaf, kind of going with the form, the three-dimensional quality there. Um, this was the back of this leaf. Okay, so once I have, leaving those highlights, let's take out this. It's going to be overlapped. Okay? All right. Um, now I'm going to come in with my yellow, green, and my yellow. Let's do the yellow first. If I look up here, I'll notice that the leaf has more highlight on this edge, so there's more yellow here, and there's more yellow here. So seeing where that is on the leaf, again, I'm not using a heavy pressure. And don't get too stressed out if it's not exactly, this was lighter yellow green, if it's not exactly like the picture. We're trying to capture the feeling and the three-dimensional qualities of the leaf. Um, now, if I look at my color wheel, what is darker than green? Well, blue is darker than green, and blue-green is darker than green as well. So I'm not going to jump right from the blue to the green. I'm going to use the blue and layer it to try to create the blue-green. So, 
Let's make sure we have the blue. Yes. So where is that leaf dark? Er, or darkest? Well, it's pretty dark on this back side of the curve. Again, light pressure. I'm not filling in. my whole shape generally speaking where there's an an in dent it's a darker value and where it's an up it's a lighter value so if my leaf is going like this I'm going to see more Come back with the yellow, it's a little more light in there. So I'm gradually building. Want to come back to my base color. Light pressure. And I'm using the yellow-green color pencil kind of as an accent. So it's important that I use the green and the yellow more than the yellow-green. Okay, so the yellow-green is sort of like the, the accents of the frosting on the cake. All right, now on our peach, we use some complementary color. So most of my base color was green, so my base color complement is going to be red. So let's just see what happens when I put a little red in with a dark green. Looking at those dark areas. Going with a curve of the form. And it can go out a little bit into the other areas as well. It makes kind of an olive green to mix the red and the blue. Okay, uh, that's going to need a little bit more work. Let's start this next leaf. If I look at the image, this leaf is very dark compared to this one. So I cannot have the leaves be the same. And this picture is a little bit different um, than that one. So let's, let's, um, we have to have a value and a color difference. So we're still going to use, I think we need a lighter on top. So we're going to use our yellow green right here at the edge for our base color. right at the edge. And then I'm going to switch, switch back to my green for the rest of the leaf. Whenever I have two objects that touch each other that are the same color, I have to create the difference. I have to exaggerate the difference because otherwise uh, it's not going to be visible. Okay, in much the same way that actors on the stage exaggerate the stage makeup so the audience can see see what's going on. Okay, and then it's a little lighter green at the top. So less pressure. So now I've got my base color in. So now the next leaf I have to decide. Again, the top has a little more light, lighter green. So I'm building in the top. Building in the lighter areas. Coming back with my cool colors. My cool colors are darker colors. Remember, blue-green is darker than... We had this really nice 
edge. Blue green is darker than green. But I always want to look at the form of the leaf. How does that value, does it go all the way over to the vein? What about the vein? Is the vein light? Is the vein dark? Quite often the rib or the vein is going to have a contrasting value and then the color of the leaf is going to change. color up here, a little more highlight. Now, I've been talking about highlights, but I haven't used the white yet. We'll come back to that a little bit later. Okay, so now it's time to introduce my complementary color, but before I do that, I have to take a look. These are a little bit too much the same, so I have to decide, even if it's different from the image that I started with, which one's going to be lighter, which one's going to be darker. Generally, light comes forward, and um, darker values go back. So I'm going to make this one underneath a little darker. right at the edge. I'm not darkening the whole leaf, but I need to separate them right here at the edge. So instead of outlining, I'm creating a shadow or a separation there. How else can I create a separation? By using my complementary color. And I also want to think about how that's going on the form. So the, the leaf is not flat. That's coming along. So I'll take that back into here. It's amazing how a little complement, if it gets a little too green, a little too red, I mean, I can bring in my complementary color. Okay, and so I, if I look at it from a distance, I have a better view of what's happening. This area is still too flat. I need to do something with that. It looks like I wasn't paying attention. So I have to come back to my picture, my image, and see where this dip is. It's a little more shadow. And how is that highlight going onto the... I like to think about color and shadows being, instead of hard like a brick wall, instead of hard like a brick wall, the colors and the values need to be open and merged together. So that was not happening up here, and it needs to happen here. So we'll come back to our base color and sort of create that open finger type approach there. Okay, and this needs to be a little different here. If things are too bright, let's use a little different complement here. Instead of red, I'm going with the orange. It'll just tone down that green a little bit there. And I think that's a little more effective. Okay? All right. Then I have my last leaf left. Still a leaf, so we're still going to use our main green. And that's where I want you to start.